Welcome to CSL TV. Well, I just hope you guys are having a beautiful, blessed day. Now, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, like, comment. It's pretty much just a review, reaction, and information on the channel. We're going to watch some videos. We're going to talk about them. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm going to tell y'all what's going on in the world. Some shit y'all probably didn't know or y'all might already know. But like always, you can't be everywhere at all time, and everybody have different access to different things. So with this knowledge that we share, we all can know about it. But if you've been rocking with me, I appreciate you so much. More than worse can explain itself. And as always, let's get it. If you're too stupid to know that what I'm trying to do is protect you, then let me spell it out for you. I am trying to protect you. With great power comes great responsibility. But some judges didn't get the memo. Today we're looking at three judges who were way out of line in the courtroom. Number three, Judge Pinky Carr. Now first up is Judge Pinky Carr, who's in trouble for her behavior in court during the COVID-19 lockdown. With the hopes of stopping the spread of coronavirus, the top courts issued an order to postpone all cases, except for defendants currently in jail. Yet Judge Carr kept her courtroom up and running as usual. The person is not here. As I've noted all week, Corona Day 3, you're all set. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Unbelievable. And she not only kept her courtroom open, but she also punished those who didn't show up. Capius, bond is set at 10000 Capius, bond is set at 5000 Note to time, 914. Assistant Public Defender Mark Jablonski decided to speak up and question the judge on her choices. Having a docket tomorrow. Oh yeah, nothing stopped for me. My cases go on. Oh yeah. Does that apply to jails only? No, anyone that shows up. Not everybody watches the news. Yeah, the don't do that. Hi. For the third time, okay. I will be Thank here. You. If people show up, I am here. But Judge Carr didn't appreciate this. I'm like, stop it. Not everybody watched the news. Wait, I'm going to call him and tell him don't come. I'm sure he is. Look, idiot. The following day, news of Judge Carr's violations reached the media, and she denied all of it. If people came to court and they were willing to, willing to risk their health, I figured I would return the favor. As far as issuing warrants for their arrest, absolutely untrue. When the Ohio Supreme Court heard about the broken rules and the lies, they temporarily barred her. After investigations, a long list of violations came to light, including coming to court in spandex shorts and tank tops, holding hearings without a prosecutor present, and waiving fines because of holidays and birthdays. Judge Carr was charged with five counts of misconduct. During her trial, Carr's attorney blamed her behavior on menopause and sleep apnea. How does sleep apnea or menopause contribute to lying? Well, <laughs> it, it, it affects her, 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 her mood, it affects um, her ability to think clearly. On October 18, 2022, Pinky Carr was suspended indefinitely from practicing law. Number Dang, two. you go to her courtroom, you might get a break, but if you don't show up, you don't get another case. So this lady did not play. She gave two fucks about COVID. She didn't give a damn what OSHA had to say because OSHA don't run her courtroom. If she the one present dealing with shit, guess what? She run the courtroom. So if you was dealing with this judge, you know what I'm saying? You was going to get stroked or some kind of fines or something because you didn't show up to court. Now, she ain't got no mask on just to say she followed the safety protocol. She ain't got none of that shit. Yes. I hate wearing my goddamn mask too. But when they said if you get the shot, you gotta wear the mask. I got the shot, still have to wear the fucking fucking wear the mask. So I said fuck that shot. So you know what? Like I said, you go to her, she ain't got damn playing around. You will get fined or something. Number two, Judge John Wool. Next we had to Clark County in Vancouver, Washington, where Judge John Wool is presiding. The judge is known for having a bit of a short fuse. He's been reprimanded for his behavior not once or twice, but four times. So when a 16-year-old boy appears before him for violating his probation, Judge Wool doesn't go easy on him. I would like to fight for myself and not have an attorney. Oh, that's not a smart play. 
That's, That's like going works. out on the field with the New York Yankees and you've never even learned how to play baseball. That's fine. The boy just wants to plead guilty and accept his probation period and doesn't see the need for an attorney to do that. But Judge Wool doesn't relent. I'm not going to do that. You're going to have an attorney assist you in this matter. But I'm not going to let him fly solo and walk into a court of law and try to practice law when he hasn't even finished high school. Just, I just wanted to say I'm guilty. We're sending it over to Tuesday. What Judge Wool fails to mention is that it's illegal for a minor to waive his rights without an attorney, and he actually has the boy's best interests in mind. But the boy doesn't understand this and continues to argue with him. And that's when Judge Wool loses all his patience. Why can't I get today? Could I have that? Because I'm doing my job, sir. My job requires that I protect your constitutional rights. You as an American citizen, that's my charge. And if you're too stupid, to know that what I'm trying to do is protect you, then let me spell it out for you. I am trying to protect you, your rights, and your freedoms. So step one is I bring the case back with an attorney, and then we talk. After his explosion, Judge Wool apologizes to the courtroom. However, it sounds a little backhanded. And my apologies to everyone in this courtroom. I very rarely lose my temper, but when I do, it's usually because someone is too stupid to recognize that I'm trying to help them. After this incident, Judge Wool was charged with conduct violations for the fifth time and consequently lost his re-election for county judge. For one judge, you shouldn't be calling somebody stupid and all this other stuff trying to degrade them because they might not be knowledgeable in those areas. And yeah, you are acknowledged of that. But the name calling my boy is something you don't need to be doing. Just for the simple fact, it's, un it's, it's, it's not necessary to call somebody something negative. You know what I'm saying? Like, what makes these people think just because you're in a high power, high position, that they can fucking talk to people any old kind of way or say what they say any old kind of way? Now, him not being able to represent himself because he's a minor is some shit he should have just said instead of calling him whatever and saying this and saying that because it's really not necessary in his own call. For county judge. Number one, Judge Robert Nally. This is 25 year old Delvin King. He's standing in front of 72 year old Judge Robert. Nally for the unlawful possession of a firearm. Three months earlier, King came to court for his preliminary hearing, but ran away in the middle of it. Not long after, police caught up to him, and he was forced to wear a remote-controlled stun cuff around his leg. Now, he's back in the courtroom representing himself. He claims he's a sovereign citizen and that he doesn't believe the court has any jurisdiction over him. Right away, that pisses off Judge Nally. Stop! Stop! King refuses to stop. Judge Nally loses all his patience. Mr. Sheriff, do it. Use it. As King screams on the floor in excruciating pain, Judge Nally calmly walks out of the courtroom for a short break. All right, I'm going to take five. Don't, don't worry. Calms down, and I'll be back. Yes, sir. Five minutes. When the shocking incident reached the Maryland top court, Judge Nally was charged with a misdemeanor civil rights violation and permanently banned from the bench. He pleaded guilty and was sentenced to a year probation and a $5,000 fine. He was also ordered to attend anger management classes. It felt like fire went through my back. Now that's some very unjust and unconstitutional type shit. Somebody talking and you just fucking tell the cop, the officer, to hit him with the taser? God damn. And he just sitting there frying with the taser because he's trying to represent himself or state what he felt like saying. You know what I'm saying? And you didn't agree with it. So you said, stop, stop. Maybe he was just trying to get this last little bit so he won't have to start over and lose track. And then you said, Mr. Sheriff, zap his ass. Well, you definitely lost your job as we see, sir. And you is a very, how can I say this? Negative, ignorant human being. I do not want this on record. This story is crazy. This is 24-year-old substitute teacher Natalie Garcia from Mesquite, Texas. She's in hot water after this video emerged from Kimber Middle School last week. <laughs> These are 12 and 13 year olds at the school whose faces have been blurred because they're minors. They're fighting each other at the encouragement of their teacher who literally started a fight club in class. 
The incident was caught on a cell phone video recorded by one of the students. The school district confirmed the whole thing, that the teacher encouraged the fighting, and that she had a student keep watch at the door while the fights took place. The mother of the student who filmed it says she was in shock. I didn't think it was real. I said, this must be a prank. This, this is not real. The teacher reportedly pushed desks aside to create a space for students to fight each other, and some kids even ended up bleeding. The teacher was an employee of the school district for just over a month. She's been fired and arrested and charged with child endangerment. And what's worse, the mother of the kid who recorded that video says her daughter's now getting death threats from fellow students for coming forward.